Hello my succulent friends, it's me Suze and I'm back. I'm just chilling out for a sec. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to all um, my recent comments on my last video. Uh, it was very encouraging so thank you. There's there's about, there's a good, um, good handful of you who are always commenting and uh, I really sincerely appreciate it uh, and a lot of the comments are very encouraging. So I've got a lot to do. Remember I said I've got a few things to tackle that I've been saving till um, I was ready to do a video. So back over at my little work area. I'm so pleased I was able to shift off all the um, propagation trays. And there's a few things on this table I thought I'd show you that um, I want to uh, do some stuff with. So first of all I've got to move on these um, flower blooms that I trimmed off. And here are my succulents I still need to pot up. Poor babies have been sitting there forever. Um, I found some really cool cheap pots. So these ones were um, at Daiso. Some Daiso. Yeah, remember I bought some stuff from them uh, a while ago. So these are $2.80. And these are also from them. And they're the same price. I think $2.80 is their sort of standard price for most of their stuff in their store, which is very good. So I've bought these before. I've got about four or five of them. I went back to get more, but they're all gone. So when I spotted a few more, I thought, I'm, I'm getting them, they're mine. They got my name all over it. So I've got three of those. Um, so now I've got a bit of consistency with the same type of pots. And these ones, I got four of them, which is basically all they had. I took them all. I took them all. I'm such a greedy girl. <laughs> all right. Um, on the shelf here, I found this at Bunnings. Dragon fruit. I love dragon fruit. It's so delicious. If you haven't tasted it, you are missing out. It's like a sweet kiwi fruit. It has that same sort of texture. It's delicious. Um, when I've traveled to Asia, Thailand, and Vietnam, Singapore, um, you know, you can get it there and it's it's so good. So when I saw this at Bunnings, I thought, far out, I've got to get that. So that's how much it costs me. So I want to give that a bigger pot. I have no idea how this all works. Uh, yeah, so who knows, who knows. If you've got any advice, uh, I'd love to hear it. Okay, um, and if, if it doesn't give me fruit, it obviously looks very young because uh, the fruits can get really big. But I've got a feeling flowers and off it will just be sensational. It'll be just a fun little project. Okay. Uh, and so I also found this at Bunnings. It's a purple delight. Bunnings call them um, crystals. And I think that has a lot to do with not getting in trouble for, I don't know, it's not copyright, but you know, rights to the name. I don't understand how all that works in the succulent world, but you, you get it. Um, so I do have some. I've showed you my pot where I've um, done some chops and I've got some babies going. But I couldn't resist getting another one. And I thought with this one, I want to slice through about that level and um, have a new head and see if we can get uh, a nice low dense sort of propagation thing happening in that and so that will just help add to the stock levels. Uh, back here I have a tray that I've been holding on to as well. This is all out of my garden. A few videos ago I showed you that there was some slug or caterpillar damage happening um, it's probably snails actually and uh, you know I could put some snail pallets out but um, I figured I'll chop up well I took the cutting so I could you know uh, propagate heads propagate leaves and see what we can do with that so that's something I need to work on as well so oh, what else have we got on the table um, this arrangement we I did a while ago on 
on a video as well and uh, I just thought you might want to see how it's looking and progressing I'm pretty pleased with it actually all in all some of you also may recall I sucked a little bit because after I did the arrangement I was a little bit too gung-ho and I put it in a very um I put it over where, where my little cute pots are and that gets a lot of afternoon uh, direct sunlight and um, I had burnt this one which was a Graptiveri pink lau and I was shattered actually <laughs> and, and upset with myself for doing such a dumb thing. I didn't acclimatise it and it was still late in summer, some of you may recall because I had a little spaz about it. <laughs> um, somebody had said that, uh, I'm sorry I can't recall who it was but one of you regular followers um, said that maybe this was reflecting a little bit of light back on it. That was a very good point. It may have. It very well may have. But so it, the weather has now subsided as far as that extreme heat. And all in all, it's doing really well. I think I bought a bit of tricolor and it's, I've sort of put in a few arrangements. This is probably the arrangement where it's doing the best. Um, so pleased about that. And off the top of my brain, I can't remember the name, but this was an eBay purchase from, um, what is it called? Collector's Corners. Collector Corner. Collector's Corner is this. They, that's them. That's their tag. Yeah, see? Collector's Corners. Corner or Corners? Corner. Um, so, anyway. Uh, so that was off their website and I got that for about $20. I'll probably put the name somewhere in here. Uh, I'll look it up. Anyway, so that's looking nice. And for those who don't know, I got the, 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 the pot from Vietnam when I was there a few years ago, just before all that COVID stuff started happening. And then, oh, I'm just leaning over. Sorry. Okay. This is another pot I got from Vietnam. It's a hand-painted ceramic. It's not an, uh, I don't know what it's supposed to be, a cup, a pot, or whatever, but I'm using it as a pot. Um, but let me show you something. I'm such a rule breaker. I love breaking rules. There's no drainage hole. You know, uh, I have never uh, drilled holes in anything. Um, not that I couldn't, I'm just lazy, can't be bothered finding the drill bit, getting, you know, da 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 da. Um, but look at that, this is doing pretty well considering uh, there's no drainage there. Um, but it's getting very crowded and uh, it's a little Echeveri up the front. So either a Colorado or it may be a pup from my. Um, from, an, uh, from another one, doesn't matter. I don't know the ID. I lost track of it. I, I was, I've got, I'm much better at that now, labeling things, but anyway. So that, why I've got this here is because I want to get these two big reds out. That's what they are, they're big reds. They were two little pups that had grown together. And when they were little, it was quite sweet, but it's definitely too big for this pot. I mean I could leave it but I should give them a bit more justice. Um, this is a beautiful crest of um, a grim one but it got a little singed. That happened the same time I got damage on that. But anyway so I thought I should deconstruct that. So oh I'm so grateful it's not that freezing at the moment. Yesterday I'll just put this back put it down. Yesterday it was like gale force winds it was just nuts there was no way I could have uh, gotten out here to do something so I don't know where am I going to start I don't think I'm going to do all of this on one video but uh I could start somewhere I think I'll start with these let's move them on right well I have been waiting for this delivery so this is a uh, systemic and I ordered it on eBay now why I want to show you is because this brand is the one that I originally tried and I found it to be really effective. 
but originally when I bought it, so rich grow, yeah, I just want to make sure. Bug a killer. Granule garden insecticide. So it treats up to 500 plants, scale mealy bug. And that's what we don't like. Azalea lace bug and aphids. And we don't like aphids. So anyway, um, so the first time I bought this, I paid about 20, I'm going to say it was about $24. I'll write in the description. I'll have a look on my eBay account. But I picked this stuff up. I found, well, I needed some more um, systemic. Currently, I've been using this brand, um, Gray's. Where's the name? Where is your name? There it is, David Gray's. And that, I thought, was better value for money because I paid... Fifteen ninety-eight for that for 250 grams and before I had paid over $20 for this this one which is 250 grams but when I went on so I've, I'm nearly out so I needed to order some more so that was $13.99 so that's a, a much better price and I guess look honestly they both do the job but I just felt like my results were better with that that I don't know if that's subjective or not but this is a really good price but I wanted to mention that um, I meant to buy it on Monday and I thought I did but I just didn't, didn't press send and then I, when I realized yesterday that I hadn't bought it so I quickly paid for it and then I got a lovely um, lovely um, message from the seller this morning saying he's upgraded my postage to express post with no extra charge and I was really touched by that and it's like he read my mind like he knew I was desperate for it um, and so I had a look at that I paid more attention to who the seller was and it turns out it's Mitre 10 from this location um, so I found that really interesting because Bunnings, our other major hardware supplier, I'm sorry for international viewers because these companies don't relate to you guys, but um, for the Australian viewers, I know Bunnings won't sell it because of the because it's you know heavy duty stuff. But I was surprised to know that Mitre 10 does. So there you go, just a little um, tip on where to get it from. And uh, this location turns out to be in South Australia, so I, I know there's a few of you from South Australia. Oh, I nearly forgot the Yabarin. Look, isn't this nice? And they also gave me some free hand sanitizer, Eco Basics, moisturizing aloe vera. Well, can't go wrong with a little aloe vera, can you? <laughs> Seems kind of fitting. Okay, well, that's very generous. That's very nice. So thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, I'll put a link to their eBay shop if you want to buy online like I have. Very easy. Like like I said, I ordered yesterday and it's here now. Mm. First thing I want to do is move these along. Just they're they're big and they're taking up space. So let's do something with them. Um, I'm going to cut off the top part where the flower is. You'll see as I showed you when I trimmed them off the succulent that bloom's about to happen. And uh, because I'm using systemics, I had to get rid of these blooms. But I'm going to use these blooms. And this was off my Echeveria Golden Glow. So Echeverias are the, the big Echeverias can throw big blooms like this. And these are ideal for this method of propagation. Um, so I've got an old pot here. I've just put some soil in it and I'm thinking I'm going to try and get all of these in there. I'm just figuring, just trying to figure out if this camera angle is right. Pull the frame back a bit. <clears throat> yep, yep. So let's just let's just get rid of the blooms for the moment. Um, these leaves are also really good to do leaf propagation. 
um, because this is a part of this is a part of the plant where it you know this is what it uses to reproduce itself the flowers but so the leaves on the flower blooms are really great to do leaf propagation but um, um, I'm not in the, um, I don't feel like doing that I don't there might be a few leaves here or there I might salvage I've done it before with this Echeveria and I much prefer this method so I think the pups, when they do come along, they're a lot bigger and healthier. So I'm really sorry for being redundant and repeating myself. It's really for new viewers that come along. Um, but my crew that watch regularly, I've probably heard this a thousand times from me, Never mind. It's also it's good fun. Good fun to watch. Um, now, I, so the, the, the principle is uh, over time these will these will root up, and above, um, sorry, in front of a leaf, a baby pup tends to grow. Sometimes you get flowers growing because remember it is a flower bloom. That's what it wants to do. But if you remove the flowers it sort of kicks it into a different gear where it tries to clone itself by producing pups. So that is the technique. Um, ratio. So there's uh, off the bloom, uh, there are some loose leaves here. These could be used for propagation if I choose to. I think I've done my camera angle wrong today. All right, so I want to put a bit of systemic in there, in there because um, uh, golden glows tend to get a little bit of mealies. Mealies do like them, and being a flower bloom, I don't know. They just seem to have the ants are clever. Not that I have a lot of ants actually, but. Aha, that's what I want to do. Okay, now the dosage to use for systemics I always find a little convoluted because they talk in volumes far bigger than what I'm working in. And so let's have a look at how they've listed it. So it's this section here. 25 grams treats 10 by 3 litre pots. So three litre pots, ten of them. Well, five grams treats ten, ten by six litre pots. So uh, it's just too much maths for me. But um, I do like how they give you a little measuring cup. So the smallest amount that they tell you is five grams. So let's fill up five grams. And I want to show you the granules too compared to the other ones. They're really different. They're bigger, they're a different colour. Five? No, a bit more would be five. Oh, that's quite a bit for five grams. So it's a really sort of golden colour. Uh, now, let me pull out the last of my other brand and so you can show the, see the difference. Turns out I had some in this little container already. So see, it's a lot finer. The colour's different. I find this does dissolve easier than this. But, um, you know, I think you could even uh, put a little bit in some water and dilute it that way. That way you know for sure the granules have been diluted. But anyway, so it's, I, I want to use... The rich grow since I haven't used it for a while so normally I just sort of sprinkle let's get that pot a little bit closer normally I just sort of just sprinkle it in I just eyeball it so you know maybe maybe I'm using too much or not enough I don't I don't know anyway so I'll water that in a little bit later now this is just an old pot that I've recycled. Um, I didn't wash out, it was pretty clean, but I do notice, I don't know if you guys um, 
always wash your pots that you're recycling but um I think under the lip is where you got to have a good look because I've noticed there's like webs and cobwebs even you know I think mealies make little homes under there so anyway just a little observation I've noticed I could cut these in half but um, I think I'll just leave them full size like this um, I'm glad that some of them have got some longer stems at the bottom so I can use them like candlesticks so just on the, the mother plant itself they've just been the lower leaves have been falling off and drying up and not every single leaf is going to give you a baby that I know for sure but I'm pretty confident we'll get quite a few off these this might get a bit crowded over time but right now it'll do the job because it will just sit there for a while before anything happens you know because it's going to try and grow roots and pups at the same time so we can keep an eye on that I could have left it on the mother plant and just cut the um, the bloom off the top that also probably would have produced pups but um, I just figured I'll just take a little stress off the mother plant by continuing to grow through these and just let her be free be free of the uh, energy suckers <laughs> no I imagine that, that you know the plant probably prefer to grow itself than grow these so there we go um, oh, gosh there's another one so it looks like we're going to have a few leaves we might as well pop them off and see how they go I'll just quickly uh, make a tray of them if any of you have been trying this um, technique drop me a comment love to hear how you're going I know some of you have told me from time to time it's been working so that's good or if you are aware of it and you've had success you want to um, confirm with others that it is a good technique drop, drop a comment love to hear from you okay these these leaves off, off these stems would have because they're some of them are really big ones they would be really good for leaf propagation um, I just think you just have a lot of trays going on but uh, you know it's nice to have different methods to use it's kind of fun doing a little bit of both as well oh my god I'm not sure if I'm pulling these off properly see how that one already has a flower in front of that leaf I have a theory I don't know if it's true or not but it's just from my observations that this leaf that leaf is already trying to produce something if flower is sort of a part of it see so I don't think they produce babies after that I don't know just a theory cannot be confirmed because I don't slow down enough to pay much mind Think that will do just throw the rest away all right um, right I'm trying a different angle so remember this was from the big red um, so I need to do that as well the winds starting to pick up god it was like gale force winds yesterday everything was like blowing around everywhere anyway there was no way I was coming out to make a video Right, so we cut the bloom off and, well the flower part of the bloom, technically this whole thing is a bloom. And I think I will cut this in half again, so you can do that, it's actually probably a good thing to do in some ways. Okay, so we've got two pieces. So I have this part, I showed you on my 
most recent video. Um, big Red. This is actually a Big Red out of my front yard, but they're all they're all from the same original uh, Big Red. I mean, these ones that I took from my Big Red in my backyard was a pup off my Big Red in my front garden. So it's all from the same. They're all cloned. They're all clones of each other. Anyway, see how that leaf has dried up? And there's the baby there. What's um, What I'm thinking about is actually just maybe it's time to take these off. And you see here, like I said, it's produced a flower. But I've got a feeling that might turn into a pup right next to it. And there, you see, it has a bit of a root system that doesn't look too good there. This one might be ready to take off because I see some roots growing there. But you know what? I think I'll just leave the whole thing for just a week or two. See if it gets a bit bigger on its own. So I'm now I'm just going to add these ones in here too as well. If you're, you know, if you're organized and clever, um, you could obviously write a date that you put these in there if, you're, if that if that interests you so you know how long it took. I don't really, it doesn't really faze me. They'll be ready when they're ready, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you this again. So these came off that flower stem bloom. Uh, originally because I don't know if you guys recall but they were actually growing on it because it was such a big stem I don't know I, there must have been another part to it that I've I don't know what I've done with it um, the rain came in last night so these are a little wet but I'm actually going to pull one out just to show you that uh, they're starting to root up so these will grow soon um, so as these grow these will be first gen and they'll be second gen so that's kind of cool I'm thinking this video is probably already about at the half an hour point so I'm thinking I might hold off on potting up those succulents and making that a separate video and I might actually make this video more about systemic so let me just talk about that for a minute I apologise to my regular viewers who may have heard me talk about this before, but I will put it in the title about systemics and mealies. So mealies are so frustrating, and if you're uh, just dealing with mealies for the first time, far out, it can be very overwhelming. The information um, online and succulent groups can be very confusing and contradicting contradicting as far as <clears throat> different methods and um, different advice so I'm just going to just briefly tell you my experiences with um, mealy control so I originally started trying to use um, a rubbing alcohol the type that you can buy at the supermarket and um, that's sort of effective it does work it will it will kill them if you get it on them properly um, but I don't feel like it's a long-term solution. I think you'll, they'll just come back and you just chase your tail. You just go round and round um, trying to um, eliminate them that way. There are other methods that are less toxic than systemics, um, such as using dish soap to wash them off or high-pressure uh, water to squirt them off. Um, and that, that those are effective too and you know they're good because it's it's not harmful to your environment and I can imagine some people will be um, concerned about systemics because of that reason so yes it is high tox um, and um, but however it's really not that bad in the greater scheme of things so what happens is when you use granules or you can buy it in liquid form I'm pretty sure too you can buy it in sprays um, and if you search for it, search for, make sure it has the word systemic 
in it. So what happens is the if you put it uh, in the soil via a liquid form or granule form that you dissolve by watering, the roots will absorb it and so it absorbs into the plant and therefore your plant effectively is toxic. So when, um, when the mealies bite into it, um, they effectively they die. Uh, but the, the, the negatives about it is it can also affect good insects like bees and it can be harmful to birds through the flower blooms um, because you know they go to the nectar and you know they ingest it and that's so therefore it's not good for them they'll die basically so that's your concern you so you do need to remove your flower blooms and that's one of the reasons why I took the flower bloom off the big red so gently that's the big red there starting to drizzle it's about to rain so this is how much I want to <laughs> persevere with this just to wrap this up for you guys um, so I deliberately took the, that massive flower bloom that was on it off uh, before the actual flower um, bloom opened up for example on these Azoros they've got some really massive blooms Right, and I actually saw one of the honeysuckling birds hanging off this yesterday. So you can see this, where is it, this flower is open. So if a bee or a bird went in there and got that pollen, if you've treated this plant for systemics. By the way, I haven't done it on these. They don't need it. They don't, mealies don't um, affect this, they don't go to this plant. So. I don't bother so I know I can leave these on for the birds so they go in there and you know if they eat that stuff um, they'll get sick or die but I usually if you do like blooms you can hold them on hold on to them until about this point until the actual um, pod opens up all right so there you are that's systemic so I hope that was helpful though let me just quickly tell you I did see um, Everybody knows, well not everybody, some of you know I really uh, admire Deborah Lee Baldwin and she has a channel and there was a video she dropped maybe about a month ago where she was in some big um, succulent nursery and they said that they, the method they use was they um, actually water their plant with a solution that has a very minute amount of lemon dish soap. I think lemon for some reason is a key part of it and if I recall it was, they mixed in apple cider vinegar and they watered their plants with it. Don't quote me on it, go look for a video if you want more information on it but there is another method. They swear by it and I can see how that could work. They actually water their plants with it. So if you're really concerned about um, not using a heavy duty poison such as a systemic. There are other methods. Don't get disheartened about merely control. Don't let them um, ruin your experiences with succulents because you can manage them. It is possible. <laughs> All right, it is cold and my nose is starting to run and I am getting rained on, I promise. You can't tell but it's slightly drizzling. So let me um, Get back into another video early tomorrow and i really got to pot up those plants that are just sitting there poor things all right bye for now i wanted to sincerely thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video i would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to my channel also you can find me as s's for succulents on my instagram and facebook page where i post daily photos with tips and information so come and hang out with me there. It's a great place to chat and connect. Thank you.